Hey everyone, Coach Cindy here and I'm here with Beth and today I am interviewing with Beth uh, because she did uh, our 12 week coaching program. We did a little bit longer and she's here six months from her initial start to share her journey um, with you all. So Beth, welcome. Thank you for joining us in this community. Do you want to just uh, tell the women in this group a little bit about yourself? Um, sure. Um... I am um, a retired elementary principal. I am the very proud mom of uh, two adult daughters who are 23 and 26. Um, I was widowed a few years ago and went through kind of a significant grief process, uh, but have found love again and I'm actually getting ready to be married next year. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I have a fur baby named Charlie and some close ties to my own family. And I'm, I'm kind of excited to uh, share the journey I've been on in the last, uh, in the last six months. Yes. Great. Yes. And uh, that's right. You do have a wedding coming up and you just bought the dress. Yes, I did. Yeah. And now Beth and I are no strangers to one another. She's been in our consistency club for a while. So she does the group challenges um, in there. And then she kind of stepped out and said, I'm looking for more. And uh, basically when we first uh, chatted, it was you were looking one, I got this dress I want to buy. And I got this idea of what I want it to look like. And I got this wedding coming up. And two, I'm furthest away from feeling my best self and my best body. And uh, as a result of that, your weight was creeping up. So you had kind of a weight goal. Is that fair to say that's kind of how we started and what led you to wanting one-on-one -on -one coaching? Yes. Yeah. So uh, basically um, when I got into my new relationship, um, some of my habits started shifting, but not positively. And so uh, it was like getting together became very much a celebration and that involves lots of food and quite frankly, wine as, as well. And that was one thing when, you know, we were first uh, connecting, uh, but we went from um, say, connecting once a week to connecting every other weekend to connecting every weekend. And then the pandemic hit and all of a sudden I had gained um, about 20 pounds, which I'm short, I'm five foot. So 20 pounds, actually it was more than 20 pounds, but um, it was a significant, it was a significant amount of weight for me. I had never been at that weight and not been pregnant. Um, so that kind of hit me. So I was able to kind of jump on um, with one of the uh, with one of the challenges, so the challenges at one point and lost, um, I think lost about, I think it was around eight pounds, give or take, and then gained a little bit of it back and then kind of got stuck and was feeling that even though I was very happy with my life, uh, and that things were going really well, that I was not happy with my body. Um, I didn't, I didn't feel I didn't like the way it was holding me back. I didn't like the way movement felt. Um, I didn't feel healthy. Uh, it wasn't in line with where I wanted to be. And so at the end of the day, I felt like I was really uh, uh, stuck. And this despite, um, I think it's fair to say that in the past I was a diet warrior. Um, there are very few um, diets and, and things I hadn't tried. Um, and often that would look like either a pretty uh, restrictive diet, sometimes involved exercise, but not a whole lot. Um, so I finally got to the point where I was just like, you know what, I've got goals. This isn't working for me. I don't like where I'm at right now. I really think I need to do something. And so if working one on one with Cindy can help kind of get me get me towards these goals, then I think that's what I need to do right now. So I did start out with a very um, set goal. I wanted to lose X, X amount of weight. And I had a goal um, event. Uh, my parents anniversary was coming up and I wanted to be able to fit into a dress that I already had. And uh, so that was that was a pretty strong motivator for me. And so I contacted Cindy and 
jumped in. Yeah. So I like that. So the women that are watching, if you're watching this and that's resonated, then they're going to give us a thumbs up. And I know it's going to, because um, what you did really nicely is you kind of said, Hey, things were just not feeling good inside me. Like other people might've looked at me and been like, you look fine. You look great. You're doing great. You're happy. But inside I just wasn't in alignment with all the other good pieces that were lining up. And then you said, and then, so before we get to the picture of like where you are now, six months later, it's let's paint, let's go back to that dieting warrior. You name you, that's what you called it there. And what we, what we had talked about on our call was that you were very much focused on the diet piece and that for you meant restricting foods. Can you just paint that picture for us of what that looked like? Like how I had restricted foods in the past? Yeah. Um, like, I think one of the best examples was, um, you know, um, doing the, like a carb addict thing where, you know, you know, carbs were the devil. And I, you know, so I, I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't eat those, but it would, it would be, I think part of what it was is that when I would finally make a decision, like, oh, I want to do something, it was like, okay, I want this to happen. I want it to happen fast and immediate. And I would get, um, Kind of a kind of a buzz when you know okay well I just lost you know x x amount of pounds and that happened really quickly and blah 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 but it wasn't uh, it wasn't sustainable because I was being so restrictive and it was very I was very much uh, depending on willpower for myself to uh, kind of continue to make that help that happen and then when it didn't happen there was a lot of shaming and blaming. Um, uh, in terms of, well, why can't you do this? You, you can do this, like you've got this, but I didn't have it at all. Yeah, and so then, then you like, you know, you go through something really heavy, you go through the loss of your husband mm -hmm. and then, um, and then we met and you had already met Quinn, your, your soon to be husband here. And so when you went, I just wanna know like what you brought with you into that, like in sense of like, I can just picture that if you're thinking I need to lose weight cause I'm in this relationship, I got this, this marriage and I've gained all this coming up and I've got this, um, this, this marriage coming up and I've just went through COVID or whatever. I'm just wondering like, were you trying to diet and then that, how that was working in your new relationship? Cause he has different eating patterns and you both like wine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he has. He has very different eating patterns and um, has been somewhat open, has been very supportive um, throughout this uh, process. Like he honestly didn't care if I lost the weight or not. Like that wasn't a big deal. That wasn't a big deal for him. Um, but I guess I saw some of some of my habits changing and that I didn't think that they were positive. And at the end of the day, I wasn't. Um, I wasn't listening to my body and what my and what my body needed. So just but there was a lot of guilt around that and a lot of negative thinking and a lot of all or all or nothing thinking. So either I'm like I'm all in on this restrictive whatever um, the program was at that point in time or I'm like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'll you know, I'll start again on Monday or I'll start again in, in the wild. But at the same time, um, that kind of thinking was kind of putting things off. So as we started talking about, for example, started talking about getting married, we um, had kind of some loose plans for a while. I couldn't, I couldn't even imagine going and trying, uh, going shopping for a dress. Um, because I knew that I was going to hate the experience. I knew I was, that there was, again, there was going to be all these negative emotions, um, you know, like, oh, why didn't you get on top of this? And, oh, this looks terrible and blah, blah, blah. And in fact, I had I had gone through a version of that uh, right before we started uh, in terms of um, my parents' anniversary, uh, which was what the gold dress, the gold dress was for. And I'd actually gone shopping and I didn't like the sizes, um, the size that I had to pull off the shelf. Uh, I didn't like how anything fit. Uh, and because I'm short, it's hard to fit dresses at the best of times. And just it just the whole thing was seemed awkward and it was in no way affirming. Um, and I'm just like, I, I think it almost became like a piece of desperation in my mind to like, I gotta, I gotta get this under control. Cause this is just driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
just because you've mentioned the dress twice, I want to roll with that one. And then I want to go backwards because you had a gold dress of going to the, um, the, the retirement party, the, the anniversary party, the anniversary of yep. parents. Mm -hmm. And then you got COVID, you got sick and you couldn't go. And you yes. couldn't wear the dress. Um, so I did, um, I was able to go, um, we were having family pictures taken that day because this was my, uh, my parents' sixtieth and it was, a it was a really great, um, great day and a very important milestone in my family. Um, I was able to put on the dress. Uh, I honestly, I felt like, uh, I felt like a crud because, um, covid for some reason meant I couldn't sleep. Um, so I didn't feel like I look, looked my best. However, I I did put this dress on and I went and um, because we were doing pictures outside, I was able to participate in that part. I just, I couldn't attend any of the, uh, the event uh, per se that day. So that was kind of um, anticlimactic. I was, I was pretty excited that I was able to wear the dress that I wanted to wear uh, and felt really good about that. But <laughs> it was kind of it was kind of deflating at the same time that um you know I'd kind of worked I felt like I'd worked hard for that um and then couldn't do it but then at the same time as I jumped into this process um while I started it very much started about the weight it didn't end up being about the weight at all like once I got past the first little while um it started being about so many more things but in particular about my mindset and um just yeah feeling yeah. like more self-acceptance and peaceful in my own mind I want to go there next and I just the reason why I wanted to bring up the dress is because oftentimes <laughs> we have like that goal that thing we want to hit and then <laughs> it's often one anticlimactic we expected more from that event or that experience and then it's no wonder we feel like we want to like give up or give in or whatever because we didn't it didn't match what our expectation was with that and number yeah. two is that sometimes we do things to meet an outcome and then once we meet the outcome, we don't have a plan to keep going. And so here it was just, I wanted to point that out because you had the dress. That's where you started was that you had the dress and then it came and then you couldn't participate fully to experience that moment. But here you are in a coaching journey that gave you the tools and the skills and the support to keep going so that yep. you were like, ah, oh, shit, you know, like I failed that. So I might as well go back. You had a plan going forward. And that's where I want to go next. The first thing I remember you telling me is I'm a foodie. Yes. So I, I think that meant something very different to you the very first call and where you are now. Can you can you describe that journey? Um, yes, because I enjoy food and I enjoy a variety of foods and lots of flavors. And um, that includes healthy food. And it's kind of, you know, a challenge to myself to, OK, how can I take something that's make something that's really healthy but also really really full of flavor so that was a part of it but what I quickly came to understand and I think my comment to you was um, I don't know how I was enjoying my food before I started this process because I was eating it so quickly uh, and then that was leading to cravings which led to well what am I eating now and eating more and more uh, and very quickly by just setting some I guess some boundaries around how I was eating and slowing things down and, and doing it more carefully that all of a sudden I was thoroughly enjoying my food and every morsel, but I was also uh, more satisfied with, with what I was eating and honestly eating mindfully kind of crushed a lot of the cravings I have, I had at that point in time because I just, because I was, totally focused on being in the in the moment and it was just kind of like okay she's talked about mindful eating but I'd never done it that way before and I'm like this is the simplest thing why did I not do this before like this works great <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh and just and, and you know just to share with the women like you you do like decadent food like when you go to a restaurant it's not like your your chain <laughs> restaurant it's like fine dining like you like good food and you know you drink wine it just we were now drinking it differently and now we were eating things differently 
Yes. Because yes. I think like with a lot, I think even with you and with what will resonate with a lot of women is that they're used to losing weight and food being boring or being same, same, mm-hmm. and then they can't stick to it. Or then the cravings increase, right? Or then they feel like they have no willpower. But for you, it was very much about like, we got to honor the foodie self. We just got to build some tools and some boundaries around it so that you can enjoy it differently. Right. And I think, I think I liked the fact that um, I was able to like within the portions, I was able to kind of accommodate things. So if I knew I was having something um, that was, that was going to be, for example, a larger carb uh, portion, I could do that, but adjust things, adjust things um, the rest of the day or that I could save. And I know this wasn't perhaps ideal, but <laughs> that I could save one of my carbs have a glass of wine with dinner at night you know and that became honestly that became um that was that was that was quite the ritual throughout this um that was a part of it but again that's something we we enjoy so yeah it was it was great to still be able to go to dinner and enjoy a glass of wine um but feel really but feel like I was staying on track or that I was honoring the the journey that I was on and uh, was still able to um, was still able to meet my weight goals was still losing weight all those kinds of things yeah um, that one was kind of mind-blowing too so talk a little bit about um talk a little bit about because you said hey she's mentioned this mindful eating piece and she's mentioned mindset before and, um, but I never really knew how to do it or I never knew how to implement it. So can you walk us through what that meant for you in your continued journey and maybe some examples? Okay, I'm gonna start by just saying, I'm gonna go back to um, the anniversary dress. Um, and I, I'm just gonna kind of flash this. It doesn't matter really what it says, but what that was that I just flashed was, that was a list of, all the things that had improved. And so that was right around the same time of the anniversary. So when we were talking about the dress, it started about being the dress, but it's so much more than the dress. If I look down this list, I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing anything about that. Um, But I'm, I'm seeing things about um, uh, enjoying my, uh, my, my food, um, uh, recognizing what I'm eating and having more awareness, taking more time for myself, more reflection, um, you know, understanding how to eat for the lifestyle I want. I mean, there were so many more wins uh, that came out of that. And that was only, that was only two thirds of the way through. That wasn't even at the end of it. That's so we still, there were lots more things that happened after that. Okay. You're going to have to remind me of the question again. <laughs> So I would, I, the question was just really like, how did, how, how did mindfulness or mindset play into your journey? I think just slowing down helped me. I, I felt, I've always felt that I was a fairly um, reflective and self-aware person. Um, and through this process, what I under, what I came to understand that um, I wasn't, I wasn't being as honest with myself um, as what I what I thought so slowing down kind of forced me to uh to see some things and to become aware whether it was about my eating or uh maybe some things in some of my actually in some of my uh relationships and that I came to understand too that um busyness was was kind of leading my life and that it was getting in the way of me being I I guess kind of purposeful in terms of what I wanted to do but that that busyness was also um it was it was putting up a barrier to some to some avenues that I needed to explore in order to kind of move things in order to kind of move things forward and so things like the daily journals um and reading the resources um, that were provided, um, that started forcing me, even though it was just five minutes a day and that's all it was, like take five, 10 minutes to do that piece. But that was so important in getting me to kind of slow down and say, okay, where am I at and what am I wanting to do? And then that led to um, starting to create more um, 
intentions and and statements around what my intentions what my intentions were so i'm slowing down i'm thinking about it and then i'm being very conscious about what's what's going to come next and just the next day you know just like this is what i'm doing today this is what i'm doing tomorrow so i had some goals for this is where i want to be in six months but it was really like but for today that's great that that's the goal but for today this is what i'm going i'm going to just these little pieces and uh, keep consistent with them. Um, and certainly it wasn't always a perfect process. And so sometimes I things went you, like- I love that you reflected on that because we'll start with a six month goal and then we'll 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 match our habits and our, our lifestyle to that six month goal, but we're here. And so what you said is, okay, this might be where I'm going and with intention, I'll get there. But you said, basically, I'm just doing this along the way. Sometimes I'll yeah. do this. And sometimes I'll just do this. It's like you're walking. You're not like full fresh splinting to the six month goal. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, through our work and breaking down. So um, breaking down some of the some of the the fitness and lifestyle goals, like so, you know, slowly, incrementally increasing my um, my the number of steps and the walking and um, eventually was able to incorporate some running, which is something I had done a few years ago and wanted to kind of get back to. So that felt really good to be able to do that. Um, uh, starting with, um, I have found that workouts are sometimes even though I've done them for some reason, um, they're intimidating. And I, I have, I felt like I had like a mental block, like Ugh, work out for an hour. Oh, I don't know about that. Um, so we, we didn't work out. I didn't work out for an hour. I started with these tiny little uh, workouts. Some of them, I think I was done in 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, I loved that because a, I felt accomplished, like, Hey, I did the workout that I'm supposed to do today. Um, but I didn't feel overwhelmed by it. And then slowly we kind of increased, increased that. And I was really uh, very pleasantly surprised uh, by um, the results that I was able to see uh, just by doing little bits of things. And, and again, you know, I'd always, I think my mindset previously had been, Oh, you got to do a big workout. You really have to, you know, hit it and, and, you know, make that impact happen. And I wasn't doing that this time. And yet I was still making some really good gains. And I, so I was, I was pretty excited about that. Yeah, I love that because I'm um, correct me if I'm wrong is your previous attempts with weight didn't do mindset. It no, was, oh, not at all. Not yeah. at all. Yeah. And so and then they were very outcome focused. If I do mm -hmm. this, then I'll get here. But then you didn't really have a plan of well, what do I do next? Or why do I keep talking to myself? So negatively why am I so hard on myself or why do I keep thinking the same kind of negative auto loop thoughts it wasn't really looking at that and very on and off so I think you know I was either on a program or I was off a program right and when I fell off there wasn't uh there wasn't really a plan where um we had a plan like, okay, so if my portions get a little out of control, we're going to, we're going to talk about that and we're going to maybe drill down and think about it or not, or, and then, but the next day we're just going to get things back on track. Well, let's do this with the port. Let's keep things moving, moving forward. We're not going to get all wound up about that yeah. and away we went. One of the things that you were really good at doing is when I presented you with an experiment. So let's say things went a little bit sideways or not as planned, right? We we would walk through, we would troubleshoot, right? And we would do the reflection and then I'd be like, how about this experiment? And you were really good at saying yes to them and being like, yeah, I'll try it and see what happens. But I think that that's, correct me if I'm wrong, is that that's what pushed you to the next level is that your willingness to go into those little mini experiments to test it out and then be like, Hey, that actually felt really good. Yeah. 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 For yeah. Sure. I love that. And so you just came back from a trip with your daughter. You were in yes. Thailand. And so I, we ended our coaching. And then this was the, the thing that you were going to be moving towards was you were going to be um, going with your adult daughter who invited you because you're pretty excited about that. And so you did that. And you said to me that, hey, like if I hadn't done this coaching journey, I don't know if I could have handled the activity the way I did. Can you just talk a little yeah. bit about that? Uh, yeah. So um, I kind of joke that um, I was trying to keep up with my with my 23-year-old um, daughter. Um, 
this was a backpacking trip, which in and of itself was a challenge for me because I usually pack much heavier than that. But um, we, yeah, basically we had um, not quite four weeks traveling around Thailand together and a lot of it uh, was around activity. So I, I needed to be able to be able to manage the backpack, which even though it wasn't huge, um, it felt really heavy at first. It felt better by the by the end of the trip for sure. Um, there was a lot of walking involved um, because, you know, it was easy to get around um, in in large cities like Bangkok. Um and much less expensive than trying to grab taxis. And if you've ever tried had a taxi experience in Bangkok, um, the drivers are very aggressive and it's like a negotiation every time. So it's like, eh, let's just walk. Um, on other parts of the trip, there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of activity involved. Um, so for example, um, going up a mountain at sunrise and then um, uh, hiking down some trails, coming back, coming back down and hiking into national parks, um, kayaking trips. There was a there was a canoe trip. So there was just a lot of activity. Um, so one of the treks was uh, 13 kilometers through a th kilometers. Yeah, it was kilometers, 13 kilometers through uh, Khao Suk National Park, which was absolutely stunning and beautiful. I loved that I was able to do that. There was that one point where we had to use a rope and kind of climb up um, um, in order to keep on the trail. And again, uh, the fact that I was able to that I was able to do that and literally keep up with my daughter, I was pretty excited. But it also feel, felt really good. It also felt kind of like a very fitting culmination to the program that we had done because I was able to, that was, that was one of my goals. Oh, I didn't have that trip in mind when I, when I started the program. Um, the fact that I wanted to be able to have adventures and be able to do the things I wanted to do. And I was able to do everything that I wanted to do um, and feel really good about it on, on that trip. So that was just, that was just pretty, pretty fantastic. I love it because it started with the weight goal and the dress. And then here you are like, um, like telling us all about this, like amazing adventure with your, your daughter. Right. And like, just, just like the memories that you built from that and the experience from that. Right. It just started from here. And like, that's how it's taken off. And we're talking to you six months post your start, which typically I talk to women shortly after they finish, but this is six month post. And so what you've said to us, what you shared with us is like, I've done the thing. And then I go mm -hmm. off the thing. I do the thing and then I go off the thing. But here you are six mm -hmm. months later. So can you just talk about like, I guess like what's the maintenance phase look like? What skills and tools and habits do you have in place to maintain it, to keep going? Well, I think um, it comes, the biggest thing is that it comes back to uh, the mindfulness. Um, so still eating mindfully. So still eating slowly and eating with awareness, even though, I may be not adhering to portions the way I was when I was on uh, when I was on the program. And um, so again, to use the uh, the example of um, being in Thailand, where um, it was it was harder to structure meals the way I was accustomed to. Like um, I actually loved having lots and lots of vegetables in my meals and things. And certainly it's not that we didn't eat vegetables, but the portion of vegetables wasn't wasn't what I was accustomed to and there was a lot of rice and noodles like almost routinely in the in those meals but again I was able to eat mindfully and say well this is what I need so I get a pile of rice that's this big but I'm just eating I'm just eating what I need and what I know is uh, appropriate for me to eat um, and you know probably consumed more uh, fruit than what I normally do because it was more readily available. But because we were active and because I was kind of being aware of things, it kind of all, it kind of all fit together. So um, again, just very much continuing that, uh, that mindfulness in terms of eating slowly and being aware of what I'm eating, uh, trying to maintain my activity levels and uh, get that back on track. Now I did, I haven't been doing a whole lot of workouts or I, I wasn't working out when I was uh, traveling. Um, so that was one of the reasons why I felt really good about the level of activity that we we're doing, but I'm slowly getting back into that uh, now that I'm, now that I'm back and post vacation and that kind of thing. And I love that because like, even when you were sick with COVID and you were down, we adjusted yeah. the plan a little bit. And here you are going on a trip, you adjusted the plan, coming back, you adjusted the plan, you know exactly how to adjust it. And you know exactly how to go back 
um, to, you know, if you wanted to, we always call it like your 80% and your 60% default, and you know how to swing with that. Whereas before you used to swing between 100% and zero, your pendulum swing is much smaller, that's 60 to 80, 60 to 80. And you've just illustrated that beautifully. Yeah, that whole adjusting the dial thing has been huge. Like, okay, well, this is, this is where I'm at right now. So I'm adjusting the dial this way but now I'm slowly going to turn it back. And I guess, and that's the other thing is that when I'm uh, re readjusting as I'm um, getting back to whatever is normal for me, um, it, it's happening very slowly. Whereas before it was always like, it was like a big crash, like, okay, go, you know, exercise, huh, diet, let's go. And um, it's, it, it's happening much more consciously and um, thoughtfully and slowly, but, also more successfully, I guess. Yeah, yeah. When um, we, we, we chatted a little bit before the interview and some of the words you said is, um, I have more honest reflections, I'm more present, I'm more aligned with your values and goals. And my guess would be that you've never thought about that before on a weight loss journey or any kind of diet attempts before. And so what, what does that mean for you and how does that align? Sorry, can you say that again? How, like you said, honest in reflection, present, aligned with my values and goals. You probably never thought of that before in terms of weight loss. Why are those important components? Um, well, I think, again, part of, the, part of the process was when I was, like before I started, I wasn't feeling, I guess I wasn't feeling like, even though I was happy I there was part of me my I guess my goals and my values weren't a hundred percent in in alignment and so as I've worked through this process that is happening that is happening more and more and quite frankly is is continuing to happening happen I'm still um kind of going down a path of you know what are what are my intentions so I think I think that's the biggest I think that's one of the biggest pieces right there yeah. So as we kind of wrap up and finish, I always like asking um, if you could give advice to any woman who wants to reach this place where you're at and you're still continuing on your journey, but they want to reach this place that you're at and they just feel really stuck. They feel really stuck. They feel really stalled or they're just really unsure. Uh, they feel fearful, doubtful. What do you say to that woman? Um, I guess I'd say uh, ask yourself if you are, if you're feeling doubtful and fearful, despite that, are you willing to kind of uh, take a leap of faith and um, explore yourself and explore some new avenues? Um, and I think if you're willing to try looking at things a little bit differently, um, you can find the, the outcomes that you want and whatever that, whatever that looks like uh, for you. And that, you know, I guess I, for a long time, felt that, you know, diet fitness came in one, one size fits all package. And what the coaching does is it adjusts the package, it customizes, it customizes the package so that it works, so that it works for you. And that's one of the reasons why I'm successful, because my thinking wasn't working before because the packet and the package wasn't working before I needed, I needed the customization to get in and like, well, what are my values? What are my triggers? What are my, what is my, what are my thinking patterns? And exploring that was what kind of opened the door to opportunities and uh, successes. And I'm going to say adventures, like um, yeah. things are, I feel like there's a lot of things, really positive things that are happening for me right now um, that are happening because I, I took a, took a chance and went on this journey and um, allowed myself to go in a vulnerable, to a vulnerable place in order to get to a better place. Yes. I love that. I always like the visual of, um, you know, your, uh, your computer, it's like, um, you know, we're, we're running with old inputs. So no wonder your computer can't do the things that newer computers do, or, you know, it keeps stalling or freezing or whatever. Right. Or it's like, you know, or I think about like dial up internet and I think it's no wonder we, we know what we want. We just can't get there because we're like still on dial up speed. Right. And so 
I like how you illustrated that because you really brought full circle how mindset is a part of that and aligning your, your values, but also that you were open in being vulnerable to see what was on the other side and to get to the other side, that that was part of the, the journey. Anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? Um, well, I guess I, I will just say again, I'm, I'm big on lists, but again, um, this well, was she part would, way. She would send me pictures and screenshots <laughs> of her lists and her drawings. <laughs> Two page lists of, um, you know, things that, uh, things that I thought, and that happened repeatedly throughout the program. So when I'm talking about it, not just being, uh, about the diet or about the weight loss and the and the dress or dresses as it ended up being uh, in terms of the benefits I had pages it pages of things that I where I felt I had benefited um uh and yeah it was just it's it's the best feeling to be on this side of things again it's not perfection um but it just feels so good and very affirming to some of the decisions I've been making and um it's queuing me up for whatever is next. And I don't know what's next, but I'm pretty pumped about what's next. Yeah. And I love too, because what you don't know is that she shared with me her six month list. We work on this exercise and she had six month goals and she said, check this out, Cindy. She's like, basically all of them have come true. And so we just said before the call, we just say, hey, it's time to redo that whole exercise so that you can do your next uh, six months. And I bet you it's going to be filled with a lot of adventure. Uh, you got a wedding coming up as well. And, um, and yeah, I just, I'm just excited. I'm excited for you to continue on this journey. Um, and, and see, and I just think about like, I can just imagine like your 30 and 40 year old self would have thought like, I'm done. I know it all. I've got this. And then here you are. And you're just like, wow, the potential is like the possibility is still endless. I thought I was done one and done. And here I yeah. am still evolving and growing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just super excited. Yeah. So I want to thank you, uh, Beth, for uh, joining us today. Ladies, if you joined on the live or the replay, just drop into the comments and tell Beth uh, what your takeaway is from her uh, sharing her journey today. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Beth. Thank you.